Hello and welcome to 20 Minute Tech. This is technology training for Irving Middle School teachers and any FCPS employee. I'm doing Snagit 10 to capture video this time for screen captures. Today I'll switch to video instead of using the image capture and we'll talk about the little tricky audio considerations. Where does Snagit save? We'll find it, we'll change it. And finally, let's add Windows Movie Maker as our editor. And this is the way Snagit looks. Uh, it's on your FCPS computer. If you want to record video, the capture mode needs to be switched. So as you can see, you can capture text as well, web capturing, but here's our video capture option. Make sure you say yes to it. It does tell you it's going to be in an AVI format. And a couple of things you may need. Uh, the microphone. And we're going to talk a little bit about audio in a moment, but be sure that is on if you're going to be using a microphone. And you can double check here if you want the preview in the editor after you're done recording. And it's pretty much that simple. So I so showed you in Snagit where the record audio button is. Um, Notice the cursor. Uh, if you're doing screen capture, a lot of times you want people to see your cursor. And let me just show you quickly, if I may. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Notice how I'm moving uh, the screen around. You can do that if you want to capture a different portion on the fly. I'm going to go into Control Panel and into my mouse settings. And uh, just to show you. If I'm doing screen captures, I like to use a extra large cursor just because where people click is important. Um, so you can set in your mouse properties your different pointers and I'm going to apply this now. I'm on YouTube. A uh, quick word about audio. I'm using a USB headset and the audio that is going to be produced here, let me just go ahead and run, is only going to be my voice. You probably cannot hear the video. So now I've unplugged my USB device and I'm using the internal microphone on the laptop and I will go ahead and play. So we're going to begin our search in... This is what you'd get as a system audio background. There's going to be a lot of background noise if people are moving chairs or if there's any kind of scratching or whatnot in the background, you'll hear it. So a USB microphone is your better option. And now for a quick video capture. Um, you just click the red button once you have it set for video and you can choose a part of the screen that you wish to capture. I have it set up to automatically ask me for a caption. That's an advanced feature, but this is, I'm just showing you the capture mode. So that'll show up at the top. And here is the start button. Comes up, um, tells you to start and stop. Um, there are some uh, keyboard shortcuts I'll show you in a bit, but this is simple. Nice thing about Snagit is that you can scroll. You can see here I'm on the uh, online textbook, so maybe I'm making a tutorial for my students and I want to show them how they could maybe view the tutorial. So I'm going to get this in my screen and I'll click start. Maybe I'm going to walk them through it. I'm going to talk them through this problem. And of course, if you've got a smart notebook or you have any kind of interactive whiteboard, you can capture yourself writing on the board. Keyboard shortcut is the print screen to stop. So I'm going to stop my capture and it is set up to automatically go to the editor. And from there, really all you can do is this play. Is simple. And you can also hit the frames so you can see where you are. Um, you can save individual images from each frame if you wish and it's going to save these in a location that's part of the preferences. I briefly mentioned that once you're finished with a capture it opens up the Snagit editor and there is a capture tray down below. You can set up where each of those videos are stored. Let's go back to Snagit. If you click on in the menu capture and output properties you'll see that 
under the program tab this is the folder and it's not a convenient folder to find because it's an administrators folder and it's rather deep so if you want to set this up to go to your H drive or maybe on your desktop for the time being um, and then move those at a later time that's possible I mentioned that Snagit does not have any editing capabilities but Windows Live Movie Maker does and a very handy way to set this up is to be able to send your video captures directly to Windows Live. I can do that back in the Capture Output Properties window under the Program tab and you'll see right here that I've added Windows Live Movie Maker. Let me show you how you would do that. Add a program and click this little browse button. Locating Windows Live Movie Maker go to uh, your computer program files scroll all the way down and find Windows Live and then photo gallery you'll see moviemaker.exe in there or you may not have the .exe showing but you should be able to see the icon and that will give you a direct path for you to send your video to Windows Live Movie Maker. Let me show you how that works. So here I am back uh, in the editor and I've just captured this video and I'm very interested in sending it to Windows Live Movie Maker so I can start editing it. I need to cut out some of the mistakes I made. So I want you to click the send tab at the top and program. Now I have one of the choices that I have already added to the program is Windows Live Movie Maker. I click OK and there it is. You may continue to do this throughout video creation. So if I make sure my cursor is at the end of my video clip by clicking to the end, there we go. Minimize Windows Live and I want this clip perhaps to go. So I'm going to click Send, Program, Windows Live Movie Maker, clicking OK, it adds it. So I can put together bits and pieces of video quickly and easily. Very nice to use, but you do need to set it up. One last point to make about Movie Maker is the file format is always, no matter which you choose, these are all different size files, but they will all be Windows Movie Video Files. If you do not want that, you will have to convert. I do want you to know that uh, the movie, even though it's in Windows Movie Player format, will play nicely within Google Drive. And I'm going to upload that file I just created. It should be in my videos. There it is. And I'll upload it. And it takes it a moment. Once the conversion is finished, here is my movie in Google Drive, and there it is. And for any of you using iPhones or iPads, a Windows Media video file will play nicely in Google Drive because of the conversion used, and you'll get the full effect.